Hello everyone! Today we're playing the game of Flotsam again. This has been quite a few updates since we played the last time, and the latest one is the upgrade systems, which will allow us to upgrade our buildings to become better buildings. And the upcoming update is gonna contain some electricity improvements of how you generate power, and uh, I do think that's gonna be a quite interesting one. But let's start a new game, and we're gonna start with some floaters floating around on the ocean, scavenging for some good loot. So, we're starting out with three different little drifters here, which have a different background. We have a port side, skin deep, and barnacle. And I will let you guys also put in your names if you wanna name one of our drifters in our town. Do let me know in the comments, and I will select a few of you guys to be able to join our new Flotsam colony. So let's check them out here, we got Portside and the restaurant inspector. Their exacting eye for a safety innovation in the kitchen made them a treasure and a scourge, depends on who you ask. That gives him more research and more in cooking. And we also have a post flood, that's what he did after the flood. They crack open muscles with the bare hands, wrestling them open to feel something, anything, which gives them more athletics and fishing, so that's good. Research, cooking, fishing, athletics, that sounds pretty good to me. And Skin Deep here with his little beautiful fish deer was a pre-flood influencer. Before the first flood, they fished for an entirely different, equally valuable resource, compliments. Which gives him, oh wow, look at that fishing, 50% more fishing speed. That is pretty powerful. And after the flood became a boat manser, they claimed to be able to control the boats from a distance, but they refused to demonstrate this ability. At least in the names, at least the name is cool, which gives a little bit more of nautistics and research. So that's some pretty cool stuff, going across the ocean faster and doing fishing. So this could definitely be our main fisherman. Then we have Barnacle, pre-flood beach comber has extremely detailed options about the metal detector and metal detecting accessories. Which, ooh, 10 plus in savaging speed. That is awesome. And after the flood became a garbage juicer. Feels like they were kinda good combined together. You can juice anything, this drifter insists. This disturbingly effective results they get seems to suggest that they have a point. Hmm. So they make some juice of every kind of garbage, which gives us a little bit more athletics and cooking. So I actually do feel like this is a pretty good setup, we got a lot of salvaging going on here. They have some increased run and swim speed, which is always good. We can travel across the ocean, we can do research, we can do fishing. I'm not a fisherman, which also have a little bit of research, I do feel like this is a pretty good crew. Well, that is it then, the garbage flood wiped away our village. Perhaps we should stop sticking to these useless rock and go explore. Who needs lands, these endless blue waves, that's all we need. The flood world's our oyster, let's polish the plastic into beautiful pearls, if only we weren't out of fuel. What shall we call our town? Scraptonia, that's gonna be Bando's new town name. See, here we are with our star little boat and our little drifters are just standing around. So we do have some trash out here in the ocean, we got some plastic, a little bit of wood as well. Which we're gonna salvage down here, we're gonna send some of our drifters to swim out here and uh, let's make this a little bit bigger so we can gather everything. And since the last time I played this game they have changed a few things so now we will also have floaters together with the plastics. So it's pretty interesting because now you will also be using these plastics to create floaters as well. So let's swim and gather a little bit, and um, we are probably gonna be doing some uh, small storage yard. Yes, we can store a little bit more down here. We can see our maximum current storage. We got a little bit of canned food, some floaters, a little bit of plastic waste, and some wet wood, which we will need to dry up later in our drying rack. And uh, that's where we're gonna probably see our first upgradable objects. So if I make one of these, put it here. When they have built that one, we will get an option to upgrade them. Which is pretty cool. I'm also gonna make a plastic recycler. This is where we will be crafting more floaters, which we're gonna need a bunch of. So here we have the basic drying racks. This one can dry one wet wood at a time, which, you know, is gonna take a long time. Down here we have the new upgrade system, which uh, requires us to have uh, two ropes, which are crafted by seaweed. 
I think they used to be wood, but now they are seaweed. And the upgraded one can do three items of drying at a time, which is an insane bonus increase. It's such a big difference, but it's a little bit further down the line. So um, another thing we should try to do early is to get some beds, because they have added systems, so you actually have to have them sleeping. If you click on uh, Drifter, you can see the status like at uh, zero, your uh, drifters will die in food and water. And sleep will also decrease. And if I remember correctly, when this meter for sleep goes down, they will actually be moving around slower, you know, which makes a lot of sense, right? So we should try to get some beds. It's not super duper important, but we should not wait for too long with them at least. But I do feel like we're gonna need some more drying racks. So I'm gonna put the one over here and I'm pretty sure we can squeeze a little path in between there later. It required that kind of size. So I'm just going to use my eyes and hopefully get right. So we'll put it here. And we just have to move that tiny, tiny bit. Okay, so there we have it. And I think we're going to get some stuff soon so we can make some more. Uh, woodwork and shadow, we need four dry wood for that one. And let's see, we maybe should increase the size here a little bit. My formal plastic and a little bit of wet wood still there. And now we can do the woodwork and shed. This is where we can make planks and firewood. I'm gonna put this one over at the, this side, kind of spread them out. So that's all cool, and I think it's time to move on to the next place just uh, when Skin Deep is going back to, with uh, the harvesting. Then we're gonna go to the next place. And nowadays you don't have to repair the engine anymore, they remove that from the game. And currently you generate power for traveling around with um, the manual power generator. This is where they use the bike to try to get around. So, now let's see what we got around. We got a little bit of flotsam, some plastic, some wood, and we also have some seaweed out there in the ocean. And oh, here we have seaweed cavern rocks as well, but over here I do see an little landmarks. I'm gonna head towards that. I might make a quick little stop by the wood pile here to make sure we gather a little bit of wet wood. We are, we know we're gonna need a lot of it. We're gonna salvage a lot of things. So I'm gonna send all my little drifters to be swimming here. We even have some large boat pieces, and in the past that wasn't even a thing either, so these are sort of like new things to me since last time, pretty much. And I do love to see some updates. This game is such an interesting game, and I really, really, really hope that it's gonna become a really good game, and also perhaps add a little bit of more, like, challenges, things you can do. Let's put to make a, a few wooden planks. I know we're gonna need them later. But looks like we cleared that one out already. So over here we have Jack Town. This one contains some dry wood, some wooden planks, and also a little bit of research. That could be nice. But we have to get closer. If we had a boat, we could have traveled all the way from here over to the Jack Town. So we do need to travel a little bit over there. So let's move the town over here. So I'm gonna send all my drifters swim over. There appear to be a small abandoned town on island. We might find some supplies there. Pretty sure nobody will miss them. Yeah, probably nobody. Hopefully no one is coming back here to live here. It do look pretty beautiful though. I do love how they made these. I feel like there are such good designs on these. It looks so beautiful. Ooh. I felt like it looked a little bit different on the barrel. Than before it had some wooden things on the back of the barrel when they were collecting maybe that depends on what object they collect these days we get a day one report so here we can see some information on the captain's log what's been going on so we have a zero change in water food and fuel and we can see what we have gathered and we what we have crafted so we can see if water is starting to fall down because then we might need to you know Increase uh, the water production, or the food, or make some more fuel. And here we can see how many drifters are without a home, and it's not super important in the beginning, like I said, to have beds, but we should try to have them pretty early. And it looks like our storage is full, so before we can loot anything more, we have to make more storage. So I'm gonna use some plastic waste and then uh, turn it into some good floaters, so... I'm just gonna queue that up to the maximum, like so. And then we can have some people craft some floaters so we can make some small storage yard. 
Once I do have uh, the normal storage yard, maybe it's better to do that one directly, maybe. But they do cost planks at the same time, so I think I will maybe... Or should I maybe go for the big one? I might go for the big one. Let's do a few more planks. Checkdown has been fully salvaged, very nice. We got it all, cool. And now we can afford to do our storage yard, which is gonna hold 45 items. So this one, I'm gonna put it right next to the woodworking shed for some quick access up there, that's gonna be nice. And it seems we can also do a watchtower, these are really good to do. This tower allows your drifters to scout distant landmarks, and what I know so far with these is that you will actually find other drifters that um, are lost in the seas, which you can have and join your town. And uh, normally it seems like they scout for them during the night time, and uh, because fires and so on, smoke and light are going up in the sky during the night. So I'm gonna make one of those, so we might be finding one for the next night, but it can take quite a long time to travel to them as well. So the next thing that I feel like I want to do is to do a manual power generator. So this one generates a small amount of power over time, but it also requires us to have some floaters and some wood. And this looks like we're gonna need to have three more floaters and one more in wood. I'm gonna do two. Because you're always gonna need a little bit more eventually. But since that one is done, I feel like we can travel while they are crafting things. So over here we have some seaweed, we got some more wood over there. We have some seaweed over here as well. I'm just gonna move a little bit like so, because then we would discover a little bit more. See what we have around. I feel like I want to go to these uh, plastic here, get some more floaters going. And we do know we have some seaweed here, and it looks like we have some ships on the rock there, so I think we can head towards that place and loot a little bit. Okay, so now we have enough uh, resources to be making a manual power generator, so that one, I'm gonna have that one sitting something like that for now. A lot of things might be sitting in temporary, and as we progress with the town, the ecosystem, if you want to call it like that, I'm not sure if that's a word you can use for this, but uh, it will change over time, it will evolve, and uh, changes will be made, just like in, you know, an autumn town, ch changes will be made over time. Uh, but let's see, I kind of want to upgrade this one. So we need to produce some ropes for that, which means we need to make a few more planks. I think that should be doable, but we might be running kind of low on at least dry wood. We do have better wet wood, but it's going to take a while. So we might want to do another dry rack. Perhaps even make a little walkway. Either we can do them on with plastic or we can do them with a mix of wood and the plastic. And I'm probably gonna do the mix. It looks like at least a tiny, tiny bit more distance. And uh, let's see if we can destruct that one. So I'm not sure if that one's gonna fit there later. And I'm not sure if they have to wait for the wood as well to dry before they destroy it. But I guess we can do a little walkway here at this side for now. So what I like to do, as you can see, the cost increases as we stretch it, so this is the maximum for just one. So what I like to do often is to make sure I stretch to the... When it changes, drop it back a little bit, like so. So we use as little resources as possible for the maximum build length of it. So I'm gonna put some more drying racks here. Looks like we can squeeze one in there, so... We will see what we do later, later but we're gonna start with a few of these. Two more, that should be pretty okay, and uh, now we have cleaned that out, awesome. And I think it's time to move on forward towards uh, the ships on the rocks there, but let's make a little stop by the wooden pile here first. So here we have 29 more in the wet wood. And I really, really, really do like to, like, dock on top of them and look what they're doing with the boat. 
Because when you are this close to it, it's so easy, you know, to quickly gather everything. I didn't know you can zoom out this much. I think that is maybe increased since the last time I played. But we're gonna go towards that seaweed soon, um, because that's what we're gonna turn into some nice, nice rope later. Let's make a little bit of floaters. Gonna queue that up to the maximum. They cost a free plastic to do every piece. And I really, really do like the change they made so you don't often use like raw plastic to make the things you want to do. You actually have to craft something and turn it into what you want to do. So I feel like the resource system is becoming better and better. So here we have a lot, a lot of seaweed. Or eight of it. It's going to be quite a lot in the beginning, I would say. And I wonder now during night we might discover a new person. Let's see what's going to happen during the night. Nighttime is really cool, by the way. I love that what they did here with the light system. And it really do look like an angler fish from the deep seas, right? Day 2 report available. So we're losing water, we're losing food. But at the same time, I feel like we're still pretty stable. We only have three people living here. And it looks like we gathered quite a few things. And we also crafted a bunch of stuff. So that is good, and it's pretty nice to see how the um, wet wood that we dry, how fast we're able to dry it now that we upgrade some stuff later on. Okay, now we can afford to do the rope crafter. I'm gonna put that one next to our little storage here. So we're gonna need to make some ropes for upgrading. Scouting. During the night, a campfire was spotted. A survivor might need our help. A waypoint has been added to the compass. I do think, however, that we need to make a pier and um, a mooring point and also add a boat. And for now, I'm gonna have it closed here because I don't want to spend a lot of resources just to go out there for now. But normally I would prefer to have uh, the boats at the very edge of town. So then we're gonna need to do a salvage boat that requires uh, four floaters, four in the planks, and two ropes as well. So two ropes, there we go. We're gonna need them for upgrading for drying some wood, but it's gonna wait for a bit. And uh, then we need four planks and floaters. We seem to have all of them. Uh, but we can make maybe... Uh, let's just wait with it. We shouldn't be overproducing things when we only have a limited amount of um, drifters. So over to this side we have our drifters lost at sea. He should be spotable, I think far far away once we get there. But he's pretty far as you can see in the number there, very very far away. So this one, I wonder can we get a little bit closer to it? So this seems to be the closest we can get. This one has some wood and the metal. Nice. I actually thought it would only have some metal, but uh, some dry wood is always welcome. Okay, let's see. We can make our savage boat. So this one is able to go across the ocean a lot farther away, a lot faster, and it's also possible to loot it twice as much as a normal drifter can loot. So that's some pretty good stuff. For the man manual power generator, by the way, you can set up how much you want them to be generating power. So currently we have it set it up so they generate power up to 50%. And after that they will not be generating any more power. Then you can go and do some other stuff. Maybe do some relaxing and stuff like that. And we can see the power of the town fuel up here in the top right corner as well. But I feel now since we have a boat, uh, we do have... Uh, that go. We can make ropes, and I feel like it's time to soon try to also produce some food, water, and also some homes. But homes can still wait a bit. But if we select one of our drifters now, we can see that they have moderate exhaustion, which means they research things slower and uh, they run slower. So I think minus one and athletics is like five percent slower. Because every point, if I remember, is 5%. So it's not too bad, really, at the first state, at least. So for food, we can make the chop shop a place to chop up your fish and seaweed, so it's ready for consumption. We can also get a fish and the sticks, good for drying fish. Sticks can dry up to 5 items, and it might be 
the better option early on and then we can make another boat a fishing boat for fishing since we did get some metal now but we also have to make the scrap smith because that's where we make metal plates for our fishing boats looks like we got everything awesome 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 salvage radius has increased so let's go ahead and we're gonna travel with our boat for a bit so we have a lot of seaweed that's awesome uh, but let's stop around here with a boat then we can have some drifters maybe swimming you can see the circle here that's for the drifter to swim and this circle out here that is for the boats but often i still prefer to move the entire town because often it decreases everything by so much anyway so over here seaweed covered rocks there's a bunch of nature we could uh, take with us over on them green rocks could be slippery watch your step yeah that's gonna be super slippery but here we see our boat coming over and who is rowing? I think it is Skin Deep. Nice. So you can see minus 1 athletics, minus 5% run speed. So it doesn't really matter that much 5%. If it's going to go up to like 20 or so, that's going to be, I would say, a lot more, right? And now we're coming home with some delicious seaweed. We can make some ropes and such with that. Uh, but let's see, maybe we can do the shop shop. Okay, so we need one rope. And four plastic and four, four and planks. Uh, so let's queue that up and we're gonna make a shop shop. Since we have three drifters, that's gonna be, I feel like, a good amount to go for. But the good thing is that since we can see here, they will only die once we reach below this. That's when they die. But uh, they can go without food for a while. We don't want them to do that, but at least we know they can. And I think these are pretty much like one day, two day, three day, four days. That's how it seems to work with sleep. So I'm guessing it is the same with food, but it could be different. It could be maybe two per day even. Seaweed covered rocks has been fully savage. Awesome, we got it all. Nice. And it looks like Skin Deep is coming home with some loot. And like I said before, guys, don't forget to drop some names for some drifters you want a name in the game. So let's see here. We might soon be able to make the shop shop. One more floater and we shall be ready. Oh, we're low on plastic waste. Okay. And we have some plastic over here. Let's send my boat to go over to gather a little bit of that. And uh, the hotkeys for these, by the way, are G for that one and F for that one. So if you sometimes wonder how I just bring this up, it's F for drifters, G for ships or boats. And you can see the radius they can go, and for boats you can see that the radius is very far away, right? But now they're out here and gathering a lot of it. And there's even some lights from uh, the boy there, it seems. The day free report. So we're still losing water, we're still losing food, but everything else seems to be going good. We crafted 24 in dry, even more, wow. Okay, so it's going a lot faster now, we got some more drying racks. And I currently actually feel like we don't even need to make any more. We could upgrade them, but I feel like we don't really need that for now. I'm gonna queue up to do a few more ropes though, because uh, we're gonna need some if we can make a fishing boat later. No, actually... No, we don't need that for the fishing boat, okay. But we can make one more at least. Okay, now we can do the shop shop and start to produce our first little food here. And as you can see, we did run down to zero in food now. But I think everyone had a piece of uh, eating directly. But let's see, they have a severe um, exhaustion, which means minus F3, so that's 15% slower. So I think we should try to get some home soon, but I still feel like water and uh, food is a lot more important. It will definitely be in real life for sure. Unless you're sleeping like, I guess, super cold and rainy and stuff. Which we probably are some days, but we don't have any rain in the game, so... <laughs> Maybe in the future we have some storms and rains, that would be cool. Maybe even, you know, have to repair things, fend off some sharks and, uh, you know, like in the game... Uh, raft, which I haven't really played much yet. I bought it, but I haven't really played it yet. So in here we can make seaweed salad and also bird shower, which we're gonna do later. But for now we're gonna do seaweed salad. Clean up seaweed, thrown in a salad bowl that will provide nutrition for your drifters. So uh, we're gonna queue up to do a lot of them. 
as many as we can for them. And they give one in food per each, so it's not gonna last for a long time. It's not like a viable living situation with those. And I might want to do some more storage. I'm gonna create a few more floaters. And we're also gonna be making um, a few more planks and prepare some firewood from when we are getting like a distiller where we will produce some fresh water because we're running low on that as well. But guys, this is gonna be it for today with uh, the new update of Flotsam and uh, we're gonna continue with this town very very soon again. I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of mix to have uh, both this game and uh, maybe a few more other indie games running outside of my Stoneheart S series. So guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed and would like to see more of Flotsam and other games, feel free to like the video. Drop a comment of a game you would like to see my channel and I will see you guys in the next one. So thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. Take care everybody.